there is a plugin that exists that could very well be the Ken Burns killer. If you're familiar with the Ken Burns effect, you'll know that you can activate it using the crop tool and by using the start and end boxes, you can create subtle zooming and panning movements. What you might not know is that the Ken Burns effect became really popular in the 1980s when filmmaker Ken Burns used the subtle panning and zooming technique for still photos in his documentaries. And it's still a widely used feature to this day but it has its limitations. And the Final Cut Pro has a Pro Zooms plugin that is so good that I don't think I will ever use the Ken Burns effect again. You might be thinking, hey, the Final Cut Pro, I know him. Hey, it's the Final Cut Pro, how can I help you? Once you've installed Pro Zooms, you'll find them in your titles browser and here are the Pro Burns plugins. But before I show you how those work, you need to understand how the Pro Zooms plugins work. I'll drag and drop the Pro Zoom adjustment layer on top of my clip and you'll notice that I have this on-screen control here to adjust the framing of the zoom. I can reposition it, scale it up or down, and let's say I place it over this church right here and play that back. It will gradually zoom in to that framing. The cool thing is I can customize this zoom a lot. Right now I have it set to build in and build out, so if I play back near the end, it will zoom back out to fill the frame. I can also adjust the speed to make it take slightly longer to zoom in, or I can make it really quick. Dylan thought of everything when he made this plugin because he added other great features like scale lock, which means if you have 4K footage on a 1080p timeline, you can restrict the zoom to a maximum of 200% so you're not losing any resolution. You can also change the type of in and out transition to have some kind of easing or to have a constant movement. And you have the option to enable the onion skin, which is really handy if you're trying to zoom in on a shot and you want to line up your focal point. You could line up your eyes in a talking head video, or like in this example, I can enable the onion skin and line up the clock so that when the clip zooms in, the focus is on the clock and your eye is drawn to the clock. I can adjust the opacity as well, and when I'm done, I disable the onion skin. If it feels like I'm losing sharpness as the clip zooms in, I can compensate for that by sharpening the shot as it zooms in. The sharpness animates in over the same period of time as the zoom, and here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the sharpness off and the sharpness on. Now, if I want to be able to pan after I've zoomed in, I can use this Pro Pan Adjustment layer. All I need to do is drop that layer underneath the zoom layer for it to work. If you don't see the on-screen control, just zoom out, and then you can drag it around to change position. So let's say we want to pan from this church over to the bridge. I'll just reposition this control and then zoom back in. When I play that back, you'll notice how we now zoom into the church and then pan across to the bridge. If you're zooming back out to the full shot, make sure the pan and zoom layers end at the same point and the speed is the same so that the shot zooms smoothly back to the original framing. If you want different animation in and animation out speeds, you can simply make a cut in the adjustment layer like this, and I'll change the speed here to 0.5 seconds. I'll also turn build out off. On the second adjustment layer, I will turn build in off, and I can leave the speed as is. Now we have a quick zoom in before panning across to the bridge and then zooming back out. Using the same intuitive controls, I can use Pro Burns to achieve the Ken Burns effect, but much easier. When you activate the crop tool to use the traditional Ken Burns effect, you can adjust these start and end boxes, which then zoom from start to end for the entire duration of the clip. If I wanted the zoom to only last a few seconds and then to stop while the rest of the shot played out, I would have to cut the shot and try to line up the start and end boxes perfectly so as not to get that weird little jump cut. To get it perfect can take a while, and who has time for that? Ain't nobody got time for that. Exactly. So with Pro Bones, I can adjust the position of the zoom, and if the adjustment layer is the length of the clip, it will zoom over the length of that clip. But I can easily shorten the zoom duration like this, and then it will zoom in and hold that position. Or I can leave it at 100%, but I'll just trim it down a bit first, and then holding down the Alt or Option key, I can click and drag to copy it. On the second instance of the adjustment layer, I'll change the movement from zoom to hold. I'll duplicate it again and change the movement back to zoom and I'll reverse the movement. Now my clip zooms in, holds, and then zooms back out. 
There is also a pro burns pan effect, which I can add underneath the pro burns effect to create a pan movement in the middle of the zoom movement. Dylan thought ahead once more for all of you social media people and created versions of these effects for square and vertical projects as well. Lastly, you'll find all of these effects in your effects browser. When you use an adjustment layer, the zoom affects everything below it, but the effects are perfect for those times when you just want to affect one specific layer. Let's say you have a title or logo or something like that. You can create a compound clip using the shortcut Alt G. This ensures that the aspect ratio is correct when applying the effect. And then you can apply these effects to create zoom movements on individual elements within your edits. I honestly don't see myself using the built-in Ken Burns tool in Final Cut Pro ever again, because not only does this plugin kill the Ken Burns effect, it also adds a ton of other functionality. I'd highly recommend checking the plugin out. And if you want to get your hands on it, go ahead and click on the link down below. Also, wouldn't it be cool if a device existed where you could ask for Final Cut Pro tips by just saying, hey, Final Cut Pro. The Final Cut Pro. Oh, it's you again. What do you want?